Trump's trade war with Canada, don't say I didn't warn you. I'm Brian Lilly with the Media. It started with milk, it's grown from there. U.S. President Donald Trump got irritated over changes Canadian dairy farmers made to effectively stop the import of one specific American product, a product worth about $10 million a year. Now Canada's softwood lumber industry is facing duties of $1 billion. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is just the beginning. So how did we get to this point? Well, it starts with the bizarre world of supply management and Canada's dairy farmers. Under NAFTA, Canada's dairy farmers are pretty well protected. But also under NAFTA, there's a clause that says you cannot add to the list of protected products anything that comes about after 1994. If it wasn't on the list then, if it's a newly invented product, then neither side can make that product a protected product. So fast forward to just a few years ago, and American dairy farmers come up with this new product. It's called ultra-filtered milk. It's more like maple syrup in consistency than what we see as milk, and it's highly sought after by cheesemakers. Canadian cheesemakers started importing it from New York State and Wisconsin, small amounts at first, then up to $9.4 million last year, which in a trading relationship that sees more than a billion dollars a day of two-way trade, it's really not that much at all. But Canada's dairy farmers wouldn't stand for the competition. So they came up with a solution that saw them change their own regulations on supply management and prices and give effectively a huge price break to the biggest cheesemakers, all to shut the American product out. That move saw the American imports virtually shut down at the end of March. So by mid-April, after being contacted by the governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo, a Democrat, and the governor of Wisconsin, Scott Walker, a Republican, Trump made this promise. In Canada, some very unfair things have happened to our dairy farmers and others, and we're going to start working on that with Ron and with Scott and with Paul and with all of your representatives. What's happened to you is very, very unfair. It's another typical one-sided deal against the United States, and it's not going to be happening for long. So. Scott, you and Ron and myself and Paul and everybody else, we're going to get together and we're going to call Canada and we're going to say, what happened? And they might give us an answer, but we're going to get the solution, not just the answer, okay? Because we know what the solution is, all right? Then a few days later, sitting in the White House, Trump made these comments. Included in there is lumber, timber, and energy. So we're going to have to get to the negotiating table with Canada very, very quickly. Again, just to tell you, this is another NAFTA disaster, and we're not going to let it continue. Well, lumber just got hit, and timber, the trade in raw logs, is yet to come. And who knows where we'll go on energy. But as I pointed out last week, things didn't have to go this way. And I'm not alone. Check out this Paul Wells column in McLean's. He's a, a man with decent contacts in the upper echelons of the Liberal government. He checked out what they had to say on this. Wells relays the story of how when Trudeau and Trump first met, Trump asked how the relationship compared with Trudeau's relationship with Obama. Trudeau was circumspect. I did have a good working relationship with President Obama, the Prime Minister said, approximately. But you know the one thing he was never able to deliver on? Softwood lumber. Well, Trudeau raised the issue days later in a phone call pushing for a solution to the softwood lumber dispute before duties kicked in. Back to Wells, who writes, the hint seems to have been taken. Some Canadians who've worked with both the Obama and Trump administrations on the softwood lumber dispute believes that until last week, the discussions were more substantive than the current, with the current administration than when its predecessor. So what happened? Well, Wells says he was told that at 1.46 p.m. on Monday, Fox News carried an interview with a Wisconsin dairy farmer who's hit hard times because of Canada, he said. The president was watching and was greatly displeased. So Trump's displeased over dairy, we all get whacked all over the place. By irritating President Trump on $10 million worth of dairy, we're now facing job losses over the countervailing duties on Canadian softwood lumber imports. You know, duties of between 3 and 24%, said to be on average about 20%. Last time the U.S. imposed softwood lumber duties, it took four years to adjudicate. Canada eventually won, but it cost about 10,000 jobs in B.C. alone. This dance over softwood lumber has happened four times, and each time, on the whole, Canada has essentially won. Now, you might think I'm playing sides, defending Trump's actions. Now, 
I'm pointing out that this is bad news, and the fact that Trump is lashing out in retaliation at Canada over what he sees as unfair trading practices. We're facing huge losses in jobs and economic activity because one of our protectionist industries didn't want competition. So now Trump is defending his own very protectionist American lumber industry. And you thought we had free trade. Forget about tweaking NAFTA. It might be time to blow the whole thing up and make sure that any future trade deal covers all of these issues. The question, I guess, will be whether Trudeau is up for the art of the deal when he faces off against Donald Trump. If you like the Rebel video you just watched, make sure you never miss another one. Again, click here to subscribe. And if you haven't subscribed to our Rebel Canada channel, make sure you do that as well.